Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Tech Century and welcome to my new video. Now, the Samsung Galaxy S4 is without a doubt one of the best phones on the market right now and it's also selling like hotcakes. But today I don't want to talk about the present but about the future. So what does Samsung have in store for us in 2014 for the next flagship, the Samsung Galaxy S5? So this is exactly what we're talking about today. We're talking about the display, the processor, the camera. So let's get started. So to start off, let's talk about the display and as probably most of you guys know, the Samsung Galaxy S4 features a 5 inch 1080p Super AMOLED display and I have to say I'm absolutely in love with this screen. I owned the Galaxy S4 for more than 6 months and it's an absolutely beautiful screen. I'm personally a big fan of the over exaggerated colors on Super AMOLED displays but that's just a personal preference. But not only in size, also in resolution, it seems like Samsung will bump it up even further for the Galaxy S5. So the rumors are that we'll get a 2K display. So if you're wondering what is a 2K display, basically that's a display with a resolution of 2516 times 1440. And to put this into perspective, this is actually the same resolution as you see, for example, on the 27 inch monitor behind me or also on a 27 inch iMac. So that's an absolutely huge resolution. And having that on then a 5.2 inch display is absolutely incredible and something that we haven't really seen before. Yes, there are a couple of other phones that are announced already with a 2K display. So for example, there's a phone called Idle already announced that it has a 2K display. Also the Oppo Find 7 is confirmed to have a 2K display. But this really is supposed to take the resolution and also just the display quality even one step further. And I have to say even 1080p looks amazing. So I can't even think about how 2K will look, but just absolutely amazing. That's pretty sure. So I'm definitely looking forward to this. Do we really need a 2K display on a 5.2 inch phone? Probably not, but then again, last year everybody said 1080p is too much for a phone and just ended up looking gorgeous. So I'm really looking forward to this new display. Next up, let's talk about the camera and the Galaxy S4 features a 13 megapixel camera. And while overall this is one of the best cameras out there on the market in any smartphone, still it's not too good, especially in some situations like low light. So for example, in low light, the HTC One was way ahead of the Galaxy S4. And it seems like Samsung will address this issue with a new technology called ISOCELL. Now, what does this allow? This allows you to have a high megapixel count. So we're talking about a 16 megapixel sensor, but also great low light performance. Now we haven't really seen any of those cameras really built into any smartphone from Samsung but they say that this is the camera that's supposed to be built in all of the flagship devices in 2014. So we can definitely expect the sensor to be found on the Galaxy S5 and also on the Note 4. But next, let's talk about the processor. And this is where this gets pretty tricky because if you look back at the Samsung Galaxy S4, there were quite a few varieties of processors in there. So for example, most European and American markets got the Snapdragon 600 version and that's a Qualcomm processor. So Samsung has to buy those processors from Qualcomm, which doesn't really make sense considering that Samsung actually builds their own processors called Exynos. So also there were Exynos variants of the Galaxy S4 with octa-core chips, so eight core processors. But the problem with those were they didn't support 4G LTE. Now Samsung did announce that they will unveil a new generation of Exynos processors at CES 2014 in Las Vegas. So we can definitely look forward to seeing the new generation there. And maybe this will also give us a clue whether we can see an octa-core processor from Samsung in all Samsung Galaxy S5 variants if they finally manage to actually make LTE compatible with their chipset. Now one more quick addition to the processor is that we are likely going to see 4 gigs of RAM. And that also raises another question whether we will see a 64-bit chip because that's kind of what Apple surprised the whole industry with. So it's likely that Samsung will also go down the 64-bit route and also add 4 gigs of RAM. So last but certainly not least, let's actually talk about the build of the Samsung Galaxy S5. And there were quite a few rumors suggesting that Samsung would finally move to an all metal construction as you'd kind of also find it on the iPhone or also the HTC One. And that would definitely be a big step for Samsung, the first departure from their plastic design. And while plastic definitely has its advantages, so for example, if you drop it, it's likely that the plastic wouldn't get damaged as bad as for example, metal would bend or also metal would just scratch. 
still, especially for a high-end and premium device that's also pretty expensive, it would just feel great in the hand to actually have a metal construction. Now there have also been some rumors that Samsung will actually launch a different device called the Galaxy S series, which is the new high-end and flagship device with a metal construction, but I honestly don't really see this coming, so it's definitely more realistic that we'll see it in the Galaxy S5 even though this is definitely something that still has to be confirmed and which is relatively unlikely and so the other specs definitely make sense. The metal construction I'm not really too sure about. And so this also ends my video. I hope that you guys could get a good impression of what we are likely going to see in the Samsung Galaxy S5. I'm already hyped for the phone. Now when we'll see this, probably sometime after Mobile World Congress in February in Barcelona because Samsung in the past years really wanted to have their own events to launch these big flagship devices. So it's likely that they'll have their own press conference and don't really announce it. For example, during CES or also just a Mobile World Congress. So probably sometime after February, but especially the screen already seems pretty much confirmed. The camera as well, the construction is still up for grabs and maybe we'll know more about the processor following CES. But as I said, I'm already excited. Let me know whether you guys are excited too. I could pretty much imagine that all of you or most of you are excited and waiting for the Galaxy S5. I'm pretty sure to pick one up as well. So just let me know in the comment section down below what you wanna see in the Samsung Galaxy S5 and which of the specs that I just mentioned you think we'll really see in the final device. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel for much more tech content in the near future also coverage of the Mac Pro. I'm SV from TechCentury. Thank you very much for watching.